Hey, bud. Nick's supposed to join two one. I don't know if he's going to or not. We'll see if he does. If he doesn't, sounds good. All right, going live on Instagram, going live on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on all of the places and faces. I'm gonna do an AMA. Ask me anything. Any art questions? Art marketing questions? Art business questions? Photography marketing? Photography business questions? You have answering live uh, for the next little period of time. Also, for those, by the way, if anyone's watching on Instagram and you ever wanted to see a demo of what we're doing we have one of those starting in like seven minutes so if you have any attention you want to go see that all you have to do is leave me a comment zoom i can send you the zoom link and you can go get an in-depth tour of all the bells and all the whistles and all the things uh that that art storefronts does so yeah tattoo charlie 91 if you want to see that leave the comment zoom i'll send you the link you can pop in there and go go watch i think the presentation goes like 45 minutes or so and you can ask any questions and, and get everything all right sbl art studio go fire away that is what I'm doing. I'm answering questions, and it could be anything about anything. Um, I sort of, I sort of have this theory on these like live broadcasts. Like, I'm a marketer, right? And so, what is my job? My job is to like send a bunch of emails and do a bunch of social media updates and try to get you to write blog posts and try to get you to read a blog post and try to get you to download a podcast. To say, you know, why don't I just open up the shop like it's the Apple Store and you just walked in? Okay. If you guys have questions, ask them. Ask them. I'll be doing them one at a time. And Juan, get the banner up there going along, going along so that uh, yep, people know. On it. Yeah, I think it was a good feature. Um, so I'll answer any questions that you guys have, any art, marketing, photo, marketing, business-related questions you have, Instagram marketing questions, uh, 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 website setup questions, uh, any and all of the above. Well, thanks for saying that, Aaron Collin Art. Obviously, that is great social proof. So I'm going to pin that one because why wouldn't I? Um, you know, it's funny. We, Erin just got me thinking about this cause she left a nice comment and thank you for that. Um, what is it, what is the normal growth supposed to be of an art business, right? Like what, what is it, what does it look like, uh, uh, really? Right. And we have this customer and I'm supposed to have him on the podcast. I haven't done it yet, but I want, I want you to hear what normal growth of an art business looks like or could look like. This in this case a photo business. Once you actually start marketing yourself, okay. I start friends now for two and a half years, and I'm happy to say that my sales have increased nicely each year. I've gone from three thousand to sixteen thousand to fifty-two thousand in sales. For 2023, I sold 103 prints, 25 cards, 13 mugs, four calendars, two pillows, and a puzzle. Uh, I've also landed one large corporate installation in 22 photo shoots that never would have happened without the website and consistent marketing. Thank you, Art Storefronts, and looking forward to 2024. Great story, Derek. Thanks for sharing it. That's how well, an art That's a much longer video. But, you know, what did, what did you hear in there? Sorry, stop cam. I got to stop this presentation. How do I do this? By the way, you guys, I'm still trying to figure out this Instagram. But what I wanted to what I wanted to rant about, I just want to. It really grows know. in the real world. Yeah. You're get out of there. Over, I did it. Go. That's my bad. Yeah, yeah that's all right. Um, look at that one. Turn your camera on for a second. By the way, we can do three people in here. Okay, that, <laughs> I love it. So, it's so cool. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, before I forget, if you guys are just tuning in and you want to see a demo, we have a demo literally running in four minutes. Um, you know, touring all of our software, all of our plans, all of our bells, all of our whistles. And all you have to do is leave me a comment on Instagram with the word Zoom, Z-O-O-M, and uh, we can route you directly into that, which is really, really cool. But I want to go back to that video. And Nick, I don't oh, know if you Pat, can see We it. should just say we have a massive deal going on right now. I just saw that we just sent an email out about 10 minutes ago mm. um, where there's a, 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 a big deal that's ending this Friday, which is a reason to see the demo. Yeah. Um, you get three months of professional audience growth for free. Okay. Um, it's normally like $1,200. That means like helping you find collectors on Instagram, for example, and getting these types of people to follow you. Um, one year of social media help. Mm. So, you know, posting on Instagram, Facebook, doing these things the right way. Um, and uh, a couple of other things. So the, um, the, the outreach team, if you request a demo, we'll tell you all of, all about that, but it's a really, really good time and a great opportunity. Yep. So any of you guys that are leaving zoom, you can go in and see that, um, right now directly. And 
you know, one, unless you're on camera, I'll probably just pull you off. But going, going, going back to that video, I mean, it's been so long, I should almost play it again, but I don't want to play it again. Um, that's what normal growth kind of should look like in an art business, right? Like you get started your first year, you're getting your feet wet, you're figuring things out, you're grinding, you're capturing emails, you're running your first sales, you're starting to develop your product lineup, you're starting to nail down your pricing, uh, you're starting to let people know you exist and you actually have art for sale, okay, which is important. Um, that's 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 what a that's what a good first year business looks like, right? And 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 that's totally normal. And then year two, uh, you're starting to pick up some more steam. You get to like the fifty, sixty thousand dollar mark, and then year three, you know, you might be knocking on on six figures, right? Or or you might struggle again and be like at seventy five. But the point is, is the business growing year after year? Is it not right? And you have to audit yourself, you know, about whether or not that's the case. Juan, will you send Jan White on Facebook? Um, of course, I told you not to do the Facebook thing. Will you send her a link to the Zoom directly? Um, she'll have to come on Facebook. But anyway, thank you very much, um, Aaron, for that comment. Thank can, you, you see, can you see the Instagram comments, Nick? I can. No? I, just, I was just pulling that up. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's pretty awesome. So um, I've said I'll answer any questions. You can see the background is ask a question, answer it. I should introduce you. This is Nick. He's our CEO here at Art Storefronts. Uh, we love coming on and like basically just operating these lives like it was an Apple store in the mall. Right. So it's like if you if you guys popped in to the art storefronts Apple store in the mall and you came in, you had any questions like, why can't we just open it up and answer and about anything and all of it? Right. Like, yeah. let's do that. You know, you, um, and, and I what I mean, it's 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 fun to talk about what just happened. I texted you like 10 minutes ago and I'm like, let's go chat. You know, let's yeah. go. Let's go talk to some people. Let's see what questions they have, all that stuff. And, you know, what I think is so interesting is like there was a comment from uh somebody we talked to the other day and they were, they were saying how, um, you know, they had a website at Wix and like mm -hmm. everything has gone to like AI support, like everything it, and has oh, yeah. it, all these, all these generic website companies or, you know, basically almost any company out there is like, they're just trying, how fast can we move to AI support and take the humans out? Right. Oh, when what terrible. we're doing is running the opposite direction. You know, and we know it just because if you're helping entrepreneurs, you know, artist entrepreneurs for that matter, but any entrepreneur, mm -hmm. like people need more help, not less, yeah. you know, like yeah. it is not easy to build any business. And I love a second ago when you were talking about, you were making references to how long it takes to build a business. And instead of saying how long it takes to build an art business an art business, you kept saying a business, a business. And I think that's so important because yeah. there is no kind of difference. It is. It's I'm a business. Sorry. I've started five companies in the last like 25 years, right? And it's like, it doesn't matter what industry you're in. It's all the same in the sense that starting a business is hard and you got to take the little wins. You try to get better every day, every year. And, you know, and, and anybody who's gone through it and has built, you know, a decent company or a successful company has been through all of the hard times, you know, and there's, I mean, it's like in the early years of art storefronts. I mean, we're 10 years in business now, but in the early years of art storefronts, one blog Pat, post a week, my win was? $10 a day on Facebook spend. Do, yeah. And, and you know what my, my one win was in like 2014, it mm -hmm. was like one positive review coming back with nine negative reviews. You know? And I'm like, <laughs> we got one, <laughs> you yeah. know? And it's because it's like, you're so early and everyone wants you to do everything. And you're like, we're so tiny. We can only do this thing. And then you learn like, okay, wait a minute. If somebody is expecting all of these things, then we can't bring them on. You know, we, we, we need to bring people on that are a good fit for where we are at this point. Now, fast forward to today, 10 years later, we obviously do an insane amount, right? Um, but I think that's so, that lesson is so important that sometimes that one little win, you know, is the, is the thing that gets you to keep going. And as long as you're getting a couple of wins, sometimes it's just learning, you know, like, I'm learning how to do social media marketing. Like that's a very, very big deal. It's a very big deal. Even if you're not good at it yet, even if you're not successful at it yet, this is a skill of the future, okay? Remember, if you go back like 10 years or 20 years, you had to hire marketers to do everything for you. Because like, where, where do I even start? I got to do PR. I got to, you know, I've got to do all these different things. And, but you being able to do it yourself this is a win. So there's all these little wins and we like to call them small wins that all end up adding up. But this mm -hmm. stuff is so important to keep your, your psychology going in the right direction, your mindset going in the right direction, you know? And, um, and so anyone who's out there, you know, listening to this, think about the positive things. There's gotta be one, two or three positive things that have happened in the last 
couple of days in the last 30 days or something, right? Maybe it's a new piece that you made, a new breakthrough, a new technique, a new thing that you learned. But as long as you're taking steps in the right direction, some days, some months are going to be faster than others. Some are going to be slower. But if you keep improving and improving, you can't lose as long as you don't quit. That's it. That's it. The perseverance is the whole game. And, you know, I got to go and get, you know, between between Noah Kagan and then, and then you know, What's his face? What's his face? The the chat GTV guy. Oh, he will not shut up about perseverance. Every Sam, other thing uh, out of his mouth. Sam Altman. Like, yeah. Perseverance, perseverance, perseverance. Okay, hold on for a second. One, if you're just joining and you want to go get a tour of what we do, leave a comment on Instagram with the word Zoom. I'll send you a link to the Zoom. You can pop in there right now, get a whole tour of the thing. SBL Art Studio. Um, I wrote, okay, that I'm I'm quite proud of it. One of the most, con not one of the, the most comprehensive what to do when you have an in-person show or fair guide that exists on the planet to get that thing. Or if anybody else wants it, all you have to do is leave the, leave a comment with the word shows and uh, we'll, it'll send everything else to you. So there you go. Um, so if you like, you know, I, I everyone's like, well, what should I do? What should I do when I have a show coming up? I'm like, oh, all you have to do is read this guide. Okay. All you have to do is read this guide because this thing will walk you through what to do before. Okay. The game starts way before, during, how to approach your list, how to do a print giveaway, every single solitary aspect of it. Doesn't matter if it's a virtual art show, SBL art studio or not. All the same rules apply. Doesn't matter. Like, you know, this is this is like one of the things that infuriates me. And you're gonna make me go on a rant now. But <sighs> artists, photographers, as entrepreneurs in the digital world trying to build an art or a photography business, your job is just to do marketing. It is not to reinvent the wheel or ignore paradigms. What is a paradigm of the website? Okay, you know what the website's supposed to do? It is supposed to replicate the best way to buy art or photography. What is the best way to buy art or photography? In person, face to face. Where does that normally go down? What is everyone's paradigm of where art or photography might sell or be seen? It's either in an art gallery or a museum. What do you notice about every art gallery in the real world, every museum in the real world? They all look the same. Plain white walls, art on the walls, being lit, nothing else. Get nothing out of the else. way. Get out of the way. Get right? out of the all, way. All, all of our websites look the same. People are like, well, your websites all look the same. Yeah, they do. They all look like art galleries and museums by design because we realized it's not our job to reinvent the wheel. No one's reinventing the wheel. There is a paradigm that exists for how art and photography sells. All we do is follow it. All we've we got all the, it. look, we've, we've been doing this for 10 years. We have over 10,000 artists and photographers. We've got all the data. Mm -hmm. we, we're the only ones that have all the data. And when somebody signs up for art storefronts, the website that we provide them with is the highest converting, the best data, the highest performing that you can actually get. And you know yeah. what? Some people come in and they want to do whatever they want with it, which you can right? If yep. you want to, you know, change it all up and do all that, be our guest, right? Um, but what we, what we're, and it's kind of the same thing. It's like, you know, Pat, what's the difference between 25 different galleries, their logo on the wall on the outside? Once what you get inside, what street corner they're cool. on, that's it. Yeah, yeah. You get out of the way because the reason is because with minimalist design and that's what it is, it's minimalism, right? Yep. The art is the design. You're not supposed to be adding a whole bunch of colors and all this different stuff and fonts and, and different fonts and, you know, Don't getting in the way. And, and you're basically like, hey, look at all my website, not my art. And you'll yeah. notice when you actually like reload the page or you ask somebody like, where does your eye go? Some people put like a huge logo and they want it like front and center. And it's like, do you understand that on every page load, somebody's going to have to see that and scroll yeah. down? You know, yep. and it's just like this big thing every time. And you, you're not thinking that way when it's like, nobody cares that, you know, you want them in your art, in your product. They'll see your logo. They're going to see your logo. Don't worry about that. You're not like Audi or BMW or like this big branded company. You need to show them your art. You need them to connect with your art, then connect with you and your brand. Yeah. I, I, I get infuriated because like, you know, we all have to learn the lesson. There's certain times where you think like, in your mind because you're doing something online that all the rules have changed. No, the rules have not changed. It's all the same game as in person, face to face. Yeah. You're just doing your best approximation of it digitally online. Um, we should mention, because I know a bunch of you guys are just joining uh, as this thing's moving along. Um, we're running a demo right now, which is an in-depth uh, uh, you know, tutorial 
not tutorial, in-depth tour of our software, um, our products, everything that we do. So to the extent that you might want to go see that, all you have to do is leave a comment on Zoom on Instagram, uh, and we can get you right in there, and you can check that out, and that will be awesome. That is number one. Uh, number two, what happened? I just forgot what number two is. Oh, yeah, someone was talking about AR on the, on the website. Um, you know, if people get hung up on features, is it like this feature or that feature? It, it, it's all the features. It's all the features working together. There's this notion, there's this notion of like assisted conversions, right? In the digital world. And this is Google's way of explaining it, which I think is really, really good, right? Um, they use a basketball analogy. Most artists are not sports people. I'm not really a basketball person. Nick's a basketball person. He's going to love this one. But the guard goes dribbling down the court, passes it to the forward. The forward passes it to the center. The center passes it back to the forward. The forward passes it back to the guard. The guard passes it to the other guard. He gets the ball back again and he shoots. Who gets the credit for that basket? Who gets the credit for that basket? Because all the teammates all had a hand in it, right? And so, okay, you just made a sale online with your website. Who gets credit for it, right? Maybe that person came from an email, came to your website, looked at the piece, used the AR feature. So we have this AR feature on our websites, okay? To show the piece on the wall and then checked out. And so you look at your analytics and you're like, hmm, it was the AR feature that got him. But what you didn't know is you were marketing on Instagram consistently for the last three to six months. You got a bunch of new followers. This follower was one of them. Then they sent you a message and said, your work's awesome. You sent a reply. Thank you so much. Let me know if you're interested in anything. It's all on my website. And then they went to your website. And then some time passed and they went to your website again. And then they talked to their significant other. And then they decided to buy, right? So it's never any one thing. It's all of this stuff working together in concert, which is why you have to do the consistent marketing, which is why that is so important. Yeah. And you know, uh, I think one of the one of the most important things here too, and there's a great, great comment from Andros. And he said, I think the ones uh, with people is the best relationship building tool. You're engaging with one person at a time. So it's slower but it's very effective in building a lasting relationship. Love right? it. 100%. It's talking about like 100%. what we're doing right now. And, mm -hmm. and, and one of the reasons we're doing this, you guys, is because Patrick and I know, having been art marketers for so long, okay, 20 years now, um, that this is the, what we're trying to encourage you guys to do the same thing. Okay, that doesn't mean you have to be like live and online like we are all the time, okay? But understand the concept here Understand how you're able to connect with us. You're able to see our faces. I'm the CEO. He's the head of marketing, right? You're talking. You, you're you're talking to the company, and and uh, um, and and so with your own customers, with the with your own uh, followers and fans, this is you know this part of building a great art business is connecting with people. You know, one on one. Answer your comments. Answer your DMs. Engage with people. Try to understand what your followers want and like you know, and try to serve them. You know what I mean? Like you got to serve a customer at the end of the day. Do you even know what they want? Yeah. It's a really fascinating thing. I mean, I, I talk to a lot of artists obviously here and there's artists that one of the things that separates the really successful artists on our platform from ones who are more on the struggling side is that concept where they're actually like extremely talented, extremely talented, can paint or shoot photography extremely well, but they're, it's like, they're just not understanding like, Hey, you just need to serve one customer. You just need to create one fan. I think that's a great way of talking about it. And we talked about creating true fans in our last podcast. You know, we, 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 need a whole, we need a whole episode on, on, we need a whole episode on, on that. Yeah, for sure, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. But we went into it a little bit for those of you who want to see it on our podcast. It's called the art marketing podcast. You can get it on Spotify or iTunes. Um, mm -hmm. and it's free. And, uh, but like serving, it takes your mind in a different spot. Like you might be like, wait, I'm going to go and create a product and then just like, Hey, let's see what happens. Right. As opposed to like, wait a minute, I've understood what somebody wants and I'm going to go create that, you know? And I, and I, I love it. I can't remember who it was, but it was an art storefronts member, Pat. She hmm. made a comment in one of our office hour sessions. And she said, we were kind of having a discussion with this, with another artist and she came on and she said, you know, it's really interesting hearing this because whenever I've created art, I've always just thought about who it's for first, you know, like who's the person it's for first. Genius. And I was like, that's such a great way. <laughs> You're a genius. Like just, yeah. that's, that's, yeah. All, that's what, if you want to sell a product, you need to like identify who it's for. Like literally like 
who are they? What is their name? Yeah. There's probably somebody in your life. It could be a friend. It could be a family member. And, and what that artist said, what she said was, she's like, when I started out, I just gave it away. Like I just made them something that I thought they wanted and I gave it to them. And then you know how her business grew? It grew because other friends saw the piece and said, I wanted one. And then they bought one from her. And so all she was, she didn't even do that on purpose, but by just simply serving a couple of people, what they might've wanted, she got her business off the ground and is doing really well, you know? And yeah. so that concept is really important. Many of you, that might be, that actually might be the one problem you have. The one you might have so much talent, but you just aren't serving one person, you know, because if you really serve one person, if you really serve one person, well, there's probably more people like that person. By the way, this is a, um, this is a principle of Brian Chesky, one of the founders of Airbnb, multi-billion dollar company, right? And what he, and he got interviewed and he said, they were asking him like, how did you build such an amazing product? Your product is so great. Your product is so great. There's software experience and all that, right? And he said, you know what we did? Like you can, it's exhausting thinking about trying to build something for so many different people. All we did was we found like one person that we thought was like our like ideal customer or like, you know, um, maybe like the, the most representative customer. And we just worked with them and we just did everything. Like we built the UI and everything around them. And then guess what happened? Once they did that for that one person and that person said they loved it, everyone loved it. So Pretty instead cool. of making it so hard, they made it so simple. And I think that that's why, you know, for anyone that's struggling to get traction, focus on one true fan. That's it. Matters. Yep. That's all that matters. Um, I'm going to go through some, some quick high level questions. And I love, I love Andrew's answer. Tattoo Charlie here. Like how many paintings do I start with? The takeaway, the takeaway tattoo Charlie is, and I saw your other comment, you know, you got a full-time job work 50 hours. How are you ever going to get it done? There's never a perfect time to start. There never will be a perfect time to start. The only thing that matters is that you get started. And everyone always likes to say, yeah, like, oh yeah, okay, Patrick, easy for you to say. You're trying to get people to sign up for art storefronts. Yeah, I am trying to get people to sign up for art storefronts, but the advice is still the advice. I could care less if you sign up for art storefronts. Go sign up anywhere you want. The point is you have to get started, okay? Exactly. Otherwise, you'd blink. Five years have gone by and you've taken no forward progress in your business whatsoever. If you have one piece of art to show off, you are ready to start the business today and you are ready to start showing that art and trying to sell it, trying to get feedback. That's number one. Number yeah. two, um, James on YouTube said, uh, what do you think about giving away small work in person? Uh, I don't like giving away work ever under any circumstances unless I get something in return. Uh, at the very least, an email address uh, is handy enough there. But if you listen to the podcast, so let me just pull this up again. So this is what it looks like, you guys. Um, most most artists just either listen on Apple or they listen on Spotify. I know I have stats. That's like 90% of the downloads is both of those places. It's everywhere else too. But there's an episode in here um james i think your name is yeah james uh that that i want you to um listen to okay and oh, i see it's two of them it's number 55 and 56 okay and 55 is smart artists don't run ads instead they do this introducing the loop and then number 56 is called supercharging the loop and that'll explain exactly what to do with your art early on uh, to capture email addresses and start getting some momentum so highly recommend you guys subscribe to that a good podcast, totally free and awesome. Do you, Nick, want to tackle once and for all the AR, uh, the AI answer? So this is the question you read it, you see whether or not you want to get involved in that. Um, while you're reading that, I would say anybody that's just joining this that wants to get a tour of Art Storefronts, all we do, all the bells, all the whistles, all the pricing, all the plans, we're running a, a session right now, not this one, uh, that you can jump right into. All you have to do is type Zoom on Instagram and, and I'll send you the link to your uh, DM box your Instagram DM box, and you can go pop into a Zoom and get it. But the AI question, simply, okay, very, very simply, and and I think we should both take our our, our own whack at answering it at a sure. high level, very, very succinctly. Um, almost zero impact on artists whatsoever, um, and the reason is, art sales are fifty fifty. It's fifty percent the art and fifty percent the artist. Okay, who they are, what their story is, and the story that they tell about in the art. People do not make the decisions based solely on how good the art is. They make the decisions on who the artist is, why they're important, why they like them, what they have in common with them. AI is never going to have a following. AI is never going to have a loyal audience uh, 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 with, with their users, with their brand. And so it, it, it's just nothing to worry about in my estimation. Now, I have a much longer one, but that's my short one. You do your short one. Yeah, I think, you know, having been in this industry as long as I have, I'll say this, like, first of all, you know, 
I don't think anybody has anything to worry about at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. And here's mm -hmm. why Th this stuff has been going on for years in different forms. Okay. So like, let me give like the most credible practical example. Many years ago, I, it was like the late nineties when this started really happening. You remember when like China really started becoming a part of our economy mm -hmm. and you know, products were coming into mega stores. cheap uh -huh. labor early days, mega very, cheap very labor. cheap labor. Well, in the art business, what happened was they had, you know, sweatshops, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And, and, and they still do to this day where you have stables of painters, stables of them in rows. Okay. Like rows of 10 going like 50 back. And all they're doing is hand painting original artwork, like reproducing original artwork all day long. Okay. And, and then there, these are the things that were ending up in, you know, Bed Bath & Beyond, Ikea, you know, you name it. And it's people flipped out. They're like, they're ruining the art business. You know, like no artist is ever going to be able to sell anything ever again. Da, 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 da. Right. And then there's photography software that has come out. People with filters, you know, doing all sorts of other stuff. It's like, this stuff has gone on for years where there's been like cheap artwork. You can go on to like, you can do any sort of a Google search. You can go on to Fine Art America or any of these places, right? And you can have anyone from anywhere in the world, poor countries, which they do from, let's just say like Pakistan or India or something like that, where people are selling artwork for five bucks, you know, whether it's photography or art. So cheap art um, and, you know, in, in, you know, in, in like a marketplace scenario where like it's a race to the bottom on who has the cheapest price. This stuff has been going on for years. It has never interrupted or did anything uh, to, you know, fine artists. And I say that as just mm -hmm. anyone who is actually creating their own stuff as an artist. And there's actually a human and a real person behind it. And it's not just like some production factory knockoff. Because I mean, I'll tell you, those paintings that are from China, Pat, I've seen them in person for many years. They're really good. Really, they good. Are really, really good. But guess what? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. I know. We're 25 years into this and it hasn't made a single difference. I put AI into the same exact category, you know, because it's just another way of producing cheap art that has no value, no connection, you know, to, to, to the human. And, um, you know, people buy, people want to buy things that make them feel good. It's why there's brands. It's why there's Mercedes and there's also Hyundai. You know, there's, uh, you know, um, the like the, the expensive handbag companies for women's handbags and there's cheap wallets that you can buy. This is reality. reality. This is absolute reality. Right. And so anyone who is selling is an artist and selling a decent product, you know, at a decent price and not even like a super high price, but just there's this th that that disruption has never happened. What, what what reality is, is those people are competing in a different market. They're competing in a different lower end market because if everybody knows all you did was type a few words, what value is there in that? It's just cheap art. So it's they're going to compete in the cheap art category and they're going to probably just compete against the cheap original paintings that you can get, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 like, look, number one, you worry about the things you have control over, right? And none of us have control over AI. That's number one. I mean, not, not in the slightest. And two, like, you know, I, I, I'm so reticent to bring this up, but it, it, it bears repeating. What is the number one thing that you guys all hate getting messages about as artists and photographers? NFTs, okay? Because you know they're all a scam and these people just want to try and take your money. But when NFTs were actually selling and were actually a big deal, it was accretive to the art market, meaning the total amount of wall art that was selling before NFTs did not go down as a result of NFTs. What NFTs did was bring new buyers into the market. I, for one, believe that AI and AI-generated art is going to bring new buyers into the market, which is awesome, number one, to begin with, right? Uh, and number two, it's absolutely going to hurt the art world, okay? And do you know where it's going to hurt the art world? It's going to hurt the art world in hotels, okay? In stores like Bed Bath & Beyond and Walmart, and Hobby Lobby. How many of you guys on Instagram or Facebook, and I'll wait, have your art selling right now in Hobby Lobby or Bed Bath & Beyond? I think they're out of business. Do they sell stores? I don't know. Uh, or, or, or Hobby Lobby or if, you're, if your art's hanging in the wall in a hotel. Like I think to some certain extent, if those people can cheap out and not pay an artist and use AI to generate the art, they likely will. 
But you know what? What percentage of total sales in the art market is that? It's like less than it's like less than 0.1%. But it doesn't matter. Like, don't stress about that. Like, that's that is not something to make you go, oh my gosh, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. I'm gonna do nothing and, and rage about this. Like, no, who cares? It doesn't matter. In fact, all you should do is embrace it. Use it to help you get creative ideas, use it to help you write product descriptions, which by the way is epic. If you've not seen how that works, that's amazing. We got to do a whole separate video about that. Um, but that's how I answer it. I'm not I'm not concerned about it in the slightest. There's way. there's one other thing that I'll add. There's mm -hmm. just one other thing that I'll add is like a cherry on top, which is like, mm -hmm. if anything, it should just remind you all of what your differentiation is, right? And your differentiation is you. It's yeah. you. That's what that's what it is. Like we we fans of artists, you know, and, and for many of you who may not have sold much or may not have sold anything, you you don't understand how this is, but like we look at you as, you know, special talented people. And we're very fascinated with your process and how you do it and your product and all of that. And there's value in all of that. And so if you are behind the scenes, this is why the like uh, people struggle so hard selling on marketplaces, like the fine art Americas and all that stuff, you know, not just because of the price war, but because it's so impersonal when you're just fighting against everyone else and there's no differentiation, there's just right. no value. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's, there's nowhere to go in that. And so it should be a reminder about, in your own marketing, in your own promotion of your art and yourself and what you do to understand, you know, what Patrick said a few minutes ago, which is 50% of the sale is the subject matter, the visual image. The other 50% is you, the connection with you, the artist, even if it's like, you know, um, it, it, you know, it doesn't mean you have to be on video all day to make that connection. You just have to make the connection, right? Yep. Um, you just, you let people into your world a little bit um, you know, you reveal little things. Sometimes it's like you're painting and you're showing your process or you're a photographer and you're talking about your process of going to a shoot. Pat, when you, we were, we were live a few days ago, we talked mm -hmm. about one of our, uh, photographers on our platform, super famous national geographic photographer, Tim Lehman, right? He, yeah. he, he's, he's doing Instagram videos, you know, where he's up like a hundred feet in a tree for hours, right? Him. Showing love that. And, 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 and then he show, and then, he, and then you see the picture that he took and you're like, if you just show the picture, I do not care about the picture. But once I know that the lengths that he went to, to get there, dredging through the jungle, climbing a tree, spending 18 hours, you know, staying up for like long hours. The story, I am like, whole, yeah, the story I'm a super old. fan. I, I'm like, I, I'm like not a fan to a super fan instantly. And the value of that artwork is in the story that I can tell when I have friends over, you know, and, and we're having like a cocktail hour or whatever it is. And it's like, Hey, do you love like, you know, that, you know, cockatoo, you know, whatever it is, or the, the, um, that parrot or whatever. Right. And it's like, no, I really don't, but you're not going to believe what I'm about to tell you. Right. Yeah. This this is the story of this parrot and how this guy got this photograph and all this stuff. And it is absolutely unbelievable, right? The, the hours of time and effort that went into this. And that's where the value is. And that's, that's the magic. Yeah. And, and the, the, the story is so, so important. Um, okay. We are, we are answering questions. So this is an important one. I get it all the time. I can answer it in two seconds. Hashtags, hashtags, IG, yes or no. Uh, spend two minutes or less. Spend two minutes or less on them and they, okay. Otherwise, no. If it takes you anything longer than two minutes, waste of time. The algorithms are so good now. They know exactly what you're posting. They know exactly what the hashtags are supposed to be. They know exactly where to place the content and they're more reliant on the algorithm than they are the hashtags. You know, hashtags are one of these things that everyone gets caught up in and they want to spend like 45 minutes stressing about them and making them. No. Give it a quick relevant hashtag, two minutes or less, move on. If I'm busy, I don't give any at all. If I have the time, I might put one or two in there. That's it. But other than that, I'm moving right there. It's just not worth it. Um, really quick, really quick. Um, since Instagram is allowing us to screen share now, can I try screen sharing really fast? Yeah. And tell me if you uh, um, if you see it. I'm going to show. Since people were talking about the augmented reality feature, I'm just going to show some like some of these different features really fast on our site. Can you see this? Yeah, yeah, we got you. So this is one of our one of our uh, painters uh, on art storefronts. One of our customers. This is his website. You can see his logo up here. And the live preview augmented reality is what that person was referring to. Now for this, you're gonna to wanna to use your phone, right? And I'm on a computer. So I'll skip that and I'll go to the wall preview. This is a, a visual simulation 
So instantly when somebody comes to your website, they are able to um, achieve whatever desired outcome it is that they're after, right? This is what helps them get to that buying decision. So for example, picking the paint color. Now these aren't just any paint colors. These are the top best-selling paint colors from Benjamin Williams and Sherman Moore, the paint manufacturers that you see at Home Depot. These are the best-selling wall paint colors in the world, okay? They're all already loaded on your site so that that person only has to pick and they go, okay, yeah, that's kind of like our wall. You know, we're going to put it behind a couch and, you know, I'm going to play with the size options here to see exactly which size. Oh, maybe that's a little big, you know, okay, this seems about right. Um, maybe I'm thinking about having this in my office or in a, in a cafe or in the kitchen, um, or maybe it belongs in my kid's nursery, right? You can also upload a picture of your own room on the spot. So if they like have a picture on their phone and they know exactly where they want to put it, they can upload it. Um, or they can just see it immediately on their phone um, and project it onto their wall without downloading an app. They can literally do this right from your website. Yep. So this is what we call the wall preview tool. And then uh, another one that we recently released in the last year is this 360 degree viewer, which allows you to see um, any media type. I think the, I like the metal because most people don't know what metal is. Most customers won't know what that is. And so, for example, you can see the back, you can see exactly what the product looks like, how it's going to hang on the wall, you know, make it a little bit bigger here. And, um, and you can do all the same thing. So you can upload a room um, and you can wall preview, live preview, all this different stuff, right? Um, so some, all, of, all of these features are just designed, like Patrick said, to try to simulate an in-person buying experience as much as possible, because this is the problem with generic websites, right? A generic website, you upload your 2D image. Nobody knows what it looks like, what it's going to look like on the wall, you know, in all these different settings. And ultimately that's where the customer is going to hang it. So the more you can facilitate what their desired outcome is, the more people are going to buy when they come to your website. 100% right. And you, you know, one thing I, I just want to show quickly because it was sort of mind boggling to me. Um, and I'm going to add this to the stage. I was looking at Wyland's site and we, we talk about him a lot because, you know, he's pretty much the best selling artist in the United States. Big deal. I know some of you guys know that I did the personal whale tail plate for California, but I also did one for Florida. Did you know that? That was Wyland's design. Did you know that? I didn't no know that in the slightest. Incredible. Let me incredible. ask you something. Do you think Wyland uh, uh, approached the DMV, Nick, or do you think the DMV approached Wyland? Curious. I don't even have to ask. No, Wyland no. approached the DMV. No. The DMV approached Wyland. Okay. Point is, the point is, and, and explain around with me, like, that's what happens when you are the man and you do outbound marketing, all kinds of deals come to you, right? Everyone's like, oh, how, how do I get into a gallery? How do I get into a gallery? I'll tell you how you get into a gallery. You make a bunch of noise. You do a bunch of marketing on your end, okay? Um, and, it, and it's very, very important in that capacity. Okay, I missed this comment. Um, recently, we've been asked to be a brand ambassador to a paper company that we brought printing paper from. What are your thoughts on artist photographies being brand ambassadors? This one's kind of this one's kind of yours, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's breathing color, I I suggest it's a yes. Tell yeah. us what company it is. Yeah. Um, but you know, I mean, if 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 you can't hurt, can't hurt. No, can't hurt at all because it's just more attention. It's actually marketing attention, right? If your name's on there and they're going to promote your name, take advantage of that. Take yeah. absolute advantage of that. It's all it's all. This is like at the end of the day, you got to promote as much as you can and get yourself out there. You know, and if you can ride like a barnacle on their business and they're going to market, by all means, absolutely, you should do it. And you should continue doing all the things, all the other things that you should be doing to promote, you know, your own business on your own social media and so forth. Yep. And, and you know, one one quick lesson, because it's so important. And I love I love showing uh, one of our customers, Meg, because I think she does a great job. Obviously, Wyland, he's big enough. He doesn't need to worry about it. But, you know, every time you get one of these brand ambassador deals or you get uh, a, a mention of any kind right like you need to realize what it represents independent if it brings you any business at all it's already a win and the reason it's already a win is because it represents what we call social proof okay and social proof is a way for you to signal to your community okay your prospective buyers that you're an artist that's on the up and up 
people are talking about you, you're going places, it establishes trust, okay? It's no different than, you know, when an agency or a service-based business puts the logos of all the companies it's worked with, right? Like when you go to some site and they're like, I've worked with Coca-Cola and Ford Motor and blah, 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 you know, and, and, and everything else. But how do you go about doing something like that tactically? And how do you go about doing something like that tactically on Instagram, which I think is important, right? It's very easy. We all know, okay, you know, she got sponsored by a paper company. Let's embed that on my website, which you should 100% do. But, but these little things on Instagram in the middle, you see, I'm moving them back and forth, all car are called story highlights, okay? And this is Meg. She's a customer, and I'm picking on her today because she does a great job. Where she's failing is the fact that I had to scroll so far to get her press section. But every single solitary one of you, the minute you have anything resembling press, and oh, by the way, you all have it because all you have to do is screenshot some really positive comments on a post and you can start, should start a press section. But you 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 look at this section, Nick, which are, which are just stories scrolling through, okay? And I'll just kind of talk as it's flowing through. You look at this and you're like, oh my gosh, who is this gal? Credibility. How is she in all of these things? How, do, how they, they keep writing about her in the paper and she's got magazine articles and she's being interviewed on news stations and da, 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 da. All that's doing is establishing in your buyer's mind like, okay, this artist is legit. They're on the up and up. They're going places. This is someone I clearly want to do business on, right? Like, you know, it, 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 it's starting to create some FOMO, but I, you know, she does a great job. Look, it's like, here she is. She's talking on a news station. She's getting interviewed in front of her art. Here's her art with a bunch of people in the background, right? And so all, all of these constitute, you know, varieties of social proof. And I realize, like, this is the type of stuff that we teach internally to our customers all the time, right? And we don't do enough teaching to, to, to people that, like, you need to have a press section, okay, on your, on your Instagram story highlights where you can show some of this stuff off. And look, early on, Fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it, right? Like throw on throw on some good comments that you get on social media. And I don't care if your significant other left the comment, but throw some of that stuff into the press section early on. You know, we got this is the this is the stuff we got to do, right? And, yep. And, and eventually it'll be self-sustaining. So, you know, Simmons Art, Simmons Simon Art, that's that's what you need to do. That's what you need to do. Um we're 42 minutes in, which means we we, we have like 15 minutes or so until Instagram cuts us off. We're answering yeah, questions. I, if you've got them, leave them. Go ahead. What were you saying? I need to. I need to jump here, so I might leave you in. But we yep. should. Uh, we, do we still have a demo going on? If anybody wants to see a demo, what do they do? All you have to do is leave a comment. Demo. Um, the words D E M O, and we'll send you the Zoom link directly to your IG mailbox, and then you could pop in there and um, yeah, get all the bells, it, all the whistles, all the pricing, all the everything. And we have one coming up later tonight too with uh, Andrea Cross. So if you're on our, on our email list, you'll 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 see that. And if you're considering art storefronts at all, or you want to, you know, learn more, you want to see that demo and we have an amazing deal going on right now. Um, there's a discount and a bunch of things that we're throwing in, like growing your audience, helping you grow your audience to mm -hmm. find collectors for three months. It's normally like a $1,200 service um, and it's being thrown in. Um, so a lot of things that can help you get off the ground, a lot of, a lot of things that can help you like get things going if you feel like you're stalled and you don't really know what to do next all of that stuff so it's a really really good opportunity if you're in that boat awesome all right well thank you appreciate the uh the, the support and popping on thank you everyone all right um so i will continue answering questions for the time that we have left um until instagram gives me the boot it's so lame that instagram only lets you go an hour it should totally let you go longer but what do you think of the new format um which is you know me, members of my team, just talking and trying to answer um, any questions that you guys might have. And, you know, I quite literally want to have fun about it. I don't, I don't want to be pitching, you know, art storefronts all damn day. Um, if there's something you're struggling with, you got a marketing question, you got a business related question. I've got 13,000 customers. I got to see all their data. I've got good answers for you. I could totally help you out, right? Uh, get you unstuck, uh, get you moving in the right direction, uh, if you like. And, and, you know, the conversation thus far has been been really really interesting i've been working on a new landing page um the landing page is just a web page for art storefronts because sometimes we don't do the best job articulating what the hell it is that we do and the theme of it is websites are just commodities in today's day and age you know can you believe that i said that after after he was nick our ceo was showing off website features and everything else the websites are just commodities in, in today's day and age you can get one anywhere you can get free ones, you can get paid ones, you can get 
cheap ones. You can get expensive ones. You can get one of ours. Ours are the best that exist out there. It doesn't matter. It's all a commodity. It's all a commodity because as soon as the website is up is when the journey actually begins. And what normally happens with folks is they get their website up and they're like, hooray, I have a business. And then it's like, no one tells you. Uh, actually, no, you don't. Now is when you actually have to start working. You have to start working to get people to come to the website. And that is, I believe, the most important thing, right? It's like the most important thing that you need to solve for and you need to be able to fix. And, and, and unless you're doing that, you know, you're in a tough time. Um, no, we do have some Zooms after hours too. Um, Tim and Simon Art. Um, I know it's kind of the, like the conundrum. Like, how do you how do you deal with that during business hours um, versus not business hours? But with the time we have left, guys, who else? Who else has questions? Uh, can be anything about anything. I'm answering Instagram related marketing questions, Facebook related marketing questions, art related marketing questions, uh, niche questions, branding questions. Do you need to worry about SEO questions? Right? Any of the above. Um, should I give my latest painting um, as my new website giveaway? Could do, Jasmine. Um, it's up to you. You know, it doesn't. It 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 doesn't really matter to me. Like you know, I think, you know, as long as you're doing it, you've won, right? And like you never know which one's going to totally resonate. What's nice about doing it with your newest, uh, your latest painting is like your instantaneous is going to get feedback on that, and you really want to get the feedback on that painting because you just created it. Right, uh, which is a really, really important thing. So yeah, I would, I would give, I would give it a shot. I would do that. Um, and what she's talking about is like, you know, one of the central techniques that that we advocate and teach is that essentially all businesses, art businesses, photography businesses included, you guys all need to advertise. Problem is, is that everybody thinks that means you know running an ad on Facebook or Instagram, which is very, you know, lighting money on fire. You don't want to be doing that. So. What does the smart artist do? They do print giveaways, okay? Merch giveaways, sometimes original giveaways uh, because they're a fantastic way to capture email addresses and run a sale, all of which I detail in number 55 and number 56. These episodes are fire. They are very, very good. And um, all you have to do to find it is, mm, that's what our podcast looks like. It's on Apple Podcasts and it's also on Spotify, which is where you all listen to according to my stats. All right. So in the barrel photo says, I saw my concert photography shots. I know what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to copy this. You guys, I'm like getting better in this as, as the time is going on. Um, so what I do is I go and I create a banner. I paste your question in. I add the banner and then, where does it go? And then everyone can see it much better. Okay. So uh, I saw my concert photography shots as well as Nature Abstract. Just launched a store. How much of a balance in my Instagram feed should reflect each type um it's a great question okay it's a great great question and don't worry about your instagram feed at all it doesn't matter it's completely irrelevant to me no one gives a shit about your instagram feed no one even looks at it all they look at is they're in their feed and they occasionally get a post and is it going to be your post or is it going to be someone else's post and so in the barrel photo what you want to do is you want to focus on the number of pieces of content that you create per week that is that that is like the most important thing you can do. Okay. And it's it, it, it and it is critically important. And you know, I should I should underscore this because no one ever shows this kind of tactical stuff. And, and it's just this is important. So when I come to someone's Instagram profile, right? Here it is, right? How many followers you have, your your description, your story, and then your links, right? And then here is your feed, right? The grid, your profile grid. What do most artists and photographers do? stress out incessantly like what this thing looks like matters in the slightest right like oh my gosh you know you see the people sometimes that'll do like you know the first nine images all make like one giant image biggest bunch of bs in the history of mankind so i want to show you something okay here's what i'm going to do i am going to go to my profile i am going to press the hamburger menu in the upper right hand corner that's going to give me my insights okay i'm going to click insights and what this is going to do is it, it's going to default to the last seven days in my account. What I'm going to do is I am going to say last, let's just say last 30 days. Okay. So it's going to give me data now on the last 30 days. So I'm going to update that. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at content I shared. And I really realize I'm going fast, but I want to make a point quickly. And so what this report essentially shows you is the best performing content that you've had on Instagram in the last clip of time, in this case, 30 days, right? So for me, um, 
and I could I could give you all the reasons why um, you know I'm embarrassed that this is the particular piece of content that was most popular in the last 30 days, but I don't want to get into it. Anyway, so I see overview, accounts reached, accounts engaged, profile activity, wonderful. You can see how many people uh, saw it that are followers, 12,000. How many people saw it that weren't followers? Awesome, 6,000. And then I want you to look at the impressions portion here, okay? So in impressions, notice from home, 17,000. From explore, 978. From other, 362 from profile uh 41 okay 41 i don't want to come back to this math so i'm just going to tell you it's like 99 one right 99 percent saw this content either from home or from explore so what does that mean this is the home button okay on the bottom of the instagram i.e your instagram feed so 99 percent saw my content either through this or through explore explore is the magnifying glass so what that should tell you is what your profile grid of images looks like is completely irrelevant. The only one stressing over that is you because you are the only one that's seeing it. And no one ever talks about that enough. You, what your profile grid of images looks like is utterly, totally, completely irrelevant. All people are going to look at is your logo, your description, and your story highlights. Every once in a while, somebody might scroll down, but the data is pretty clear. Like these people are discovering you as a result, okay? Um, as a result of, of seeing something in their feed or seeing something uh, in the Explore tab and not anywhere else. So it's kind of liberating. Like that's the only thing you need to worry about. You don't need to worry about anything else. You don't need to worry about what your profile looks like in the slightest, okay? Um, so I hope that answers that question. All right, um, da, 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 what is Eric saying? So I'm trying to monetize my AI, AI artwork. You know, I am a member and ready to start my site. Are the strategies any different than what you've been talking about? No, Eric, not at all, not at all. Um, and I talked about the AI stuff earlier, like you're the brand just as much as the work is the brand, right? So nobody cares that you're creating on AI or not creating on AI. You still have to do marketing. You still have to talk about like how you're a prompting genius and you're blending images in mid journey or what you're doing, whatever your process is, how are you arriving into these incredible images? You still gotta do all the same stuff, right? Like. You know, this is this is like my big takeaway is that like <sighs> the whole ball game is what happens after you get started. Whether or not you're a successful artist or photographer is what happens after you get started. And let's assume for the case of argument, getting started is you have a website somewhere that has your art up on it and ideally can take a credit card to pay for it. Then what? Then what's going to happen? What are you going to do then? Right? What are you going to do then? You know? Um, if you don't have help with the marketing and you're not working on the marketing and you're not focused on the marketing, then you're in trouble because it's the whole ball game. Um, okay. So in the barrel photo is saying, you know, should I push for collaboration post with the brands I work with that have hundreds of thousands of followers to reach more people? Absolutely. You should. Okay. There is a very, very smart way about going about doing this. Okay. And you should be doing it all the time. And if only somebody dealt with it in detail. So it's on the podcast. It's number 56. So do you see this supercharging the loop? Okay. Last week I covered the loop. This, this one is exactly in the barrel photo, what you need to be doing. Okay. Uh, 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 with those accounts that you have relationships with. And, you know, if you already have relationships with them, boy, is that going to save you a ton of time because they owe you one, they already love you, and they're going to be like, yes, I'll do that for you, right? Um, so that's 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 what I would say. 100% you should be doing that. Um, you know, it's, it's a constant chicken and the egg situation early on for artists, right? Like, it's the biggest problem, especially starting out of the gates. It's like, I know my work is great. If I could just get it in front of enough eyeballs it would sell. Problem is, I don't have enough eyeballs to get in front of. So what do I do? You have to find some of these accounts that have huge followings and you have to convince them to show your work off. And I walk through that in detail in that podcast episode, which is really, really good. Seriously recommend every single solitary one of you listen to it. It's free and it tells you exactly what to do. And man, you get a couple of those things working and it is it is a, a, a game on time, right? Another one, Another one I have in here that everyone should listen to, and I might as well talk about this, and this is going to take us right up to the the um, but da, 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 the the cutoff time, so to speak. But I did I did um, a podcast interview, and it's it's on the podcast. I don't know which episode it is, but I want to show the visual because it'll make it really cool. But um, and this is sort of specifically for 
in the barrel photo. So in the barrel photo, I did this episode with Meg and she's, um, she's a longtime friend. She's been on the platform for a long time, but she essentially, and I'm going to, I'm going to show it. Okay. I'm almost there guys. Hold on. Here it is. Boom. Totally not. That other one is not completely formatted. Well, so she has like this celebrity Midwest thing going on. Okay. And she did this, um, she did this painting and I'm going to show it off here for a second. Where is it? 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 Come on. This is just going so slow. She did this Ted Lasso painting for charity, right? Um, and it's 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 really cool. Yeah, so there it is. There's the painting, okay? And it's awesome. She met Ted Lasso or Ted, Jason Sudeikis, I should say. You know, said he was cool and the whole thing. And then afterwards, she created this mug that looked like that, right? And so essentially the strategy that I've been advocating that you do here is that you go and find an account that has a bunch of following, right? And in your case, you said, I work with these brands that have hundreds of thousands of followers. Okay. In Meg's case, she found a, why am I blanking on the name of the show? What is the name of the show? The soccer show. I'm a huge soccer fan too. And I can't even remember what it is. What is it? What is the show called? Why am I blanking on that? Anyway, she found an account that was really, um, loved that show. Okay. And she gave away one mug. She let the she let the page, the Instagram account, give away one mug. And as a result of that, she sold so many mugs. Her credit card processing company, which is striped, shut her down because they thought it was fraud. Um, and she tells this whole story here, which is really, really cool. In fact, I bet I can play it. Let's see if it works. Different, Different streams, streams of income. And one thing that you were really pushing at the beginning of this year was uh, you know, smaller smaller like, like merch items things, things that people, people can impulse purchase, purchase yes. to, to pr like, like to, to pull, pull new, new customers, customers in and, and something, something really interesting, interesting is that i did, I did the ted lasso, lasso piece uh like, like last december mm -hmm. and um i did, I did that, that piece it was on my website. website it was all all there i met and jason sudeikis like we did the whole thing is he cool about and literally yes very nice very i mean i met him for like you know five total minutes. So I don't know, it's not like we're best friends, but, uh, but we, you know, did all that thing. And you would think like, certainly, certainly everything sold after that, like nothing, like it was totally quiet. Then as the season three and the finale started to like kick up um, a few months ago, I created a mug like with that image on it and just the word believe. And, and I, I did, did a give, give I, did I did like, like a cool video of it. And I did a giveaway with a curator who had like 250,000 followers. And I shit you not, I sold so many mugs that my bank called me because they thought it was sorry, fraud. sorry for the colorful language, but she, she essentially found an Instagram account. Okay. That had 250,000 followers and got them to give a mug away. And then just, you know, ended up, ended up selling so many of them. And look, you don't, you don't make a million dollars selling mugs, but you acquire a ton of new customers. So, all right, good session. We're right up against the hour broadcast limit on Instagram. So I think we will leave it there. Appreciate all of you guys tuning in. I hope you found it valuable. Um, pretty much anytime we're doing these things, it's live Q and A. So have your questions ready. If you see live pop on, drop it. Could be anything about anything. Um, we want to answer. Uh, want to answer it and try and help you guys out. So thanks and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye guys.